So today we're going to look at um, K-series engines and in particular the problems that can be associated with overheating and cooling issues um, that the engines have become very famous for. The first thing before you undertake any work or inspection on the car that we feel are most important is that you um, ensure that you've got all the details of the symptoms from the customer, i.e. Um, has it been running hot, has there been smoky emissions from the car, um, what sort of level of water consumption has the car been um, experiencing over the time that the customer has been aware of the problem and are there any other different characteristics particularly with regard to the heating inside the car. Okay. The first items when um, looking at cooling problems on K2 is to check off for external coolant leaks and some of the most common causes of these on the K-series engine can include our friend the water pump um, which loses coolant, um, the inlet manifold <laughs> gasket um, firstly um, which there used to be a problem with in the earlier days but they modified and went to a, a thicker type of gasket which when you remove the inlet manifold should be a bright green thick rubbery um, type of gasket. These commonly before uh, removing the uh, inlet manifold will be able to be seen by pink coolant stains down the back of the engine block. Um, so common, common things on most K-series engines to check first water pump inlet manifold gasket um, and on MGF and TF, um, also the underfloor coolant pipes which run from the engine at the back of the vehicle down to the radiator at the front. These commonly will corrode for two reasons. Um, firstly, weathering on the underside of the car as they're exposed and being mild steel will corrode and leak. But also if the car hasn't got a continuous history of antifreeze changes and antifreeze kept to the correct strength, they can actually corrode inside out as well. These can now be replaced with stainless steel ones as a small extra cost option, um, providing much longer life, um, but otherwise mild steel ones are also very easily available. If the coolant leaks are addressed soon enough, um, this can very often prevent the situation developing into a head gasket failure, which they're commonly known for. If you find that the coolant loss has been persistent and uh, we've now reached a situation where cylinder head gasket failure has occurred, um, there will be some quite clear symptoms, i.e. Um, emulsification of the engine oil and the water, sometimes noticeable on the dipstick and in the oil filler cap, but also commonly in the expansion tank where the coolant would normally be sat at the correct level. Um, if that's the case, if, you, if you've got water loss um, on the exterior and the emulsification, it's more than likely going to be a head gasket. You would carry out further tests on the cooling system via a pressure test to see whether coolant loss or loss of pressure is occurring. You can also carry out the chemical test to check for exhaust gases present in the cooling system um, and obviously paying extra attention to the visual checks that we've already discussed. If you have got a, a head gasket failure, um, we move on now to removing the inlet manifold. And this is one of the very important items to check during the stripping process for two reasons. Um, other than the inlet manifold gasket, the copper inserts here and here can corrode, which will cause uh, water loss. But during a head gasket failure, you also find that the overheating process will sometimes warp the plastic face of the inlet manifold, causing it not to seal properly when you refit it with the new gasket. This is the original K-series cylinder head gasket. It's a single sheet of aluminium with an electrothermostatically sealed bead, rubber bead on the gasket face on both sides. Um, not an entirely strong design of gasket and when subjected to overheating through low water level you'll find that the strong bead on there will melt or split allowing the, the gasket to fail and the symptoms we've already discussed to develop. In 2003 they were modified slightly with some reinforced webbing which you may just be able to pick out in this picture all the way around and that certainly did slow the rate of failure um, but didn't stop it as with overheating it can be just as susceptible to the uh, melting and splitting that we've described. Thankfully nowadays we have the new MLS gasket sometimes termed as a Land Rover gasket which is a genuine MG Rover part developed by um, powertrain division of MG Rover and now supplied by X-Part. This has um, a multi-layer shim design which cannot fail in the same way as the original, um, original K-series head gasket. 
Um, and indeed, we've found extreme success with these. Um, no future, no further failures after these gaskets have been replaced. It is important, however, when fitting these, to ensure that some other careful checks are carried out. Um, these include checking the cylinder head face. We have one on the counter here um, to ensure that there's no warpage um, or pitting in the cylinder head face. Um, obviously, this is another item, if not dealt with, can cause to a repeat failure when the engine goes back together. You also need to check the cylinder block um, for distortion and the liners for dropping. Um, when checking the cylinder block, um, it's due to the narrow space in the engine bay with the engine in situ still, we found um, it wasn't always possible to get a totally reliable measurement on the cylinder liners with a standard straight edge. So we acquired a slightly shorter one, which enables us to go down the width of the block, as well as with the larger straight edge going over, over the, the length of the block. And this is critically important because the tiniest amount uh, of, a, of a liner dropped um, can cause exactly the same problems again. Um, the new, the new multi-layer shim gaskets also, also come with a strengthened lower oil rail. You can see the difference here with the two uh, rails I have in my hands here. The lower one is the original type one, which is a, a lighter cast of aluminium, and the newer one, um, which is strengthened, is much heavier cast, making the sandwich construction of the K-series engine stronger when it all goes back together. One should also check the cylinder head bolts, which are commonly termed as stretch bolts. These um, naturally do stretch during overheating, and um, the original recommendations used to be that you measure them, and if they're within a tolerance, um, you replace. Uh, if, if they're within a tolerance, you need to um, reuse them. If they are stretched beyond that tolerance, the bolts should be replaced. We actually recommend, as a matter of good practice, to replace the bolts every time. Um, because once they've been subjected to that overheating, they're never quite as strong as, as they used to be. So to recap, check cylinder head face for uh, warpage and pitting. Check cylinder block for uh, warpage, pitting and liners dropping. Check inlet manifold for uh, distortion of the plastic and corrosion of the metal inserts. Um, and check the water pump and underfloor pipes if fitted to the F and TF for corrosion and, and leaking.